The nation's two largest rideshare companies, Lyft and Uber, both pushing back against Texas's new restrictive abortion law. It effectively bans abortions after six weeks and gives private citizens the right to file civil lawsuits against anyone considered to be aiding in an abortion. That would include anyone who drives a woman to a medical center, for example. Now, Lyft and Uber say they will cover the legal fees of drivers who might face any lawsuits for that. Lyft has also donated a million dollars to Planned Parenthood in the wake of this. The company's co-founder sent a letter to employees. Let me read you part of it. Quote, we want to be clear. Drivers are never responsible for monitoring where their riders go or why. Imagine being a driver and not knowing if you're breaking the law by giving someone a ride. Similarly, riders never have to justify or even share where they're going and why. Imagine being a pregnant woman trying to get a health care appointment and not knowing if your driver will cancel on you for fear of breaking the law. Both are completely unacceptable. And I should note the new Texas law too extreme even for some pro-life Republicans. Listen to what Congressman Adam Kinzinger told our Dana Bash just yesterday. Well, there's a lot of question about what the Supreme Court thing meant. So look, for me, I'm pro-life, but what I don't like to see is this idea of every citizen being able to tattle, you know, sue an Uber driver, uh, you know, as you said, be deputized to enforce this abortion law to whatever they want. Let me bring in Kristen Sferchek. She is the general counsel for Lyft. Kristen, thank you for your time this morning. It's a really important issue. Thank you so much for having me, Poppy. So it was Lyft that decided to do this. Uber joined on literally an hour later. So both major companies are now on board. But can you bring us into the decision-making room? How did you guys make this decision? Absolutely. Well, you know, first and foremost, as you said it, this law is egregious and it bans virtually every abortion in the state of Texas. And it also encourages private citizens to sue one another. And so late Wednesday night after the United States Supreme Court failed to enjoin the law, our president or and CEO, John Zimmer and Logan Green reached out and said, what can we do about this? And a small group of us immediately convened. Um, I was very heartened to see this from two male co-founders understanding this law's impact on a woman's right to choose. And very quickly, we decided that we wanted to act. We were also hearing from our drivers who are very concerned about what this means for them. Are they under some obligation to monitor where their riders are going and why? And so we both wanted to come out strongly in support of a woman's right to choose, as well as make our drivers feel okay. Mm -hmm. We did not want them being in this untenable position of not knowing whether their behavior was okay or not. Yeah. And so within that first uh, 24 hours, we decided what we were going to do. And we were lucky to have strong support from our board of directors, including Valerie Jarrett, who we discussed with. And she said, I only wish I had thought of it myself. Hmm. It's interesting that a lot of this also was prompted by by drivers being concerned. What does this mean for me? Am I all of a sudden going to be on the hook for, you know, $10,000 and, you know, potential civil prosecution? What is happening now, Kristen, as you know, following this move in Texas is that a number of Republican-led states, more than half a dozen, are looking to follow Texas's path here and pass similar laws that the Supreme Court at this point hasn't intervened in and doesn't even know if it has the authority to check because we're in uncharted territory. If that happens, is, is, is Lyft's promise to cover all the legal fees for any driver who may be brought suit against indefinite, and would it span all of those states? That is our intention, yes, Poppy. Um, obviously, every state may enact its own laws. This Texas law is unique in that it has this private right of action, um, which is, you know, as we just heard on the clip, a bound too far for even uh, Republican Congress people. But um, yes, law, uh, Lyft wants to support its drivers in this. Um, the the overbreadth nature of the law, where it says that anyone can be liable for aiding or abetting is it's just unique and it's egregious. And so that is why we wanted to come out strongly in support of our drivers and strongly against this law. Let, let me ask you a question that's not legal, but you're a, a high ranking executive at the company. And I just it's very interesting. And we're in a new sort of phase of corporations speaking out and acting on social issues that are very divisive, like abortion. You wouldn't have seen this, I think, five, 10 years ago. Um, and you've got 
you know, polling that shows 42 percent of residents in Texas, for example, support banning abortion after a fetal heartbeat, for example. Not specifically this law, but that in general. H how do you weigh that as a company? Because for sure, all of your customers, employees, drivers will not agree with this. Yes, thank you for that question. And when we discussed this decision, we knew that it could be controversial and we knew that we would not see 100% support, but this was very much a moment of wanting to do what is right, what we as the executives at Lyft felt was right. And I'm very proud of us for having done this. Um, we will lose some customers because of it, but that, that, was not, that was not something that was going to stop us from acting here. It's notable because it follows other decisions and, and moments of speaking out on social issues that Lyft has made. For example, in 2019, you guys gave a million dollars to the ACLU uh, right after former President Trump issued that travel ban on those Muslim-majority countries, um, obviously have taken a progressive stand on a number of environmental issues. Is it Lyft's position that the role and responsibility of founders and CEOs in America is changing on social issues that are not directly related to their business, that they need to speak out on them? Yes, I think that's right, Poppy. Um, you know, I joined Lyft nearly nine years ago after working as the company's outside counsel. And one of the reasons that I joined the company and one of the reasons that I've stayed as long as I have is because we are values led. Um, probably nine years ago, we would not have spoken out on this issue. and. Honestly, as I think back on it, I'm not sure why. Abortion is a constitutionally protected right. And so I'm happy to see us here taking a voice. And I hope that more of corporate America does this. Now that said, governments should also be passing fair legislation and not look uh, to inappropriately ban a constitutional right as they have here. But I do think it's important that cor corporate America holds government accountable and speaks out on important mm -hmm. issues. Well, I think if we've learned anything in the last few years, it's how much power corporate America does have on key issues like this. Kristen Svertek, thank you guys very, very much uh, for taking the time to come on, especially on a holiday. Thanks, Poppy.